Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Rosenberg Radio, um, Cypher Sounds hit me up the other day. Sean, you remember Cypher Sounds, right? My brother! Shani said, uh, not Shani, Cypher said, I got a really funny comedian friend named Des Bishop. Um, he's an Irish gentleman, an Irish American, who's going to be uh, holding it down uh, this weekend at Caroline's for St. Patrick's Day. You should have him up. And he said he's like a fan of hip hop and, you know... Uh, blah 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 and I said uh, okay and uh, here he is his name's yeah. Bishop first time in, I've been doing comedy 21 years and I've never it's ne I've never been introduced as I'll be holding it down yeah, yeah, yeah. this weekend people don't refer to you as holding it down no this is dream come true man <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you I, finally you finally made it I'm in Hot 97 studio man it's yeah. actually a, a big deal for me so uh, so tell us so you're you're an Irish American from Queens but spent most of your life in Ireland yeah so from Flushing Queens Johnny I got kicked out. Queens. All right, thank Represent you. All day. Are you, are you from Queens? Hollis. Oh, oh Hollis? To be specific. Oh, come on. Even yeah. Irish people know about Hollis. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, uh, Christmas in Hollis is like one of the songs that goes yeah. on the sort of Christmas loop. Even oh, in, of course. Even in, even in Ireland at Christmas time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I got kicked out of St. Francis Prep, which you probably know also I in Fre right Fresh Meadows, uh, Queens. Fr and when Francis I was 14, Lowe. one of the reasons I got kicked out was I had a problem with alcohol. So my mother had this ingenious idea to send me to Ireland to go to boarding school. Perfect. Perfect. So I really you know, was able. If to someone's not, if someone has a problem with drinking, you send them right to the belly of the beast. Yeah, well, they, you know, they said <laughs> may, maybe this guy's got potential to be a real alcoholic. Let's, could, <laughs> let's let's really let's let's send him to the the Premiership. <laughs> let's send him to let's the NFL. He, right, right. Like, let's see what he's capable <laughs> of. The NBA of drinking. Anyway, I mean that's sort of semi joke, semi true. But uh, I I wasn't meant to stay there forever. But then you know college is free. The government pays for your uh, university education. So and your parents were Irish citizens, so you. Well, could... no, my dad grew up in Ireland. My mother's actually Irish American, born in Manhattan. Okay. And then. I went to college. When I was in college, I got into comedy, and then my comedy, you know, my career started in Ireland, and I never left. I literally just moved back, like, what, what, over the last couple of years. Okay, so... But my family were always here, so I'd always be back Christmas, Easter, summer, so I've always been, like, a sort of a hybrid. That's identity. really interesting. So your your dad had the citizenship, though, to get you to be able to live there, right? How well, did you move, I, actually, how did you move my, I need... I, I got it through my grandparents anyway. Got it. So okay. it wasn't... That, that wasn't a problem. So... It's not as... It's, it's never as much of a problem in Ireland. Like, literally... I was the only American that went to Ireland in 1990. The traffic was very much the other way back in those days. Exactly. So there wasn't like a big issue of uh, what visa does this guy have? Right, right, because <laughs> no people weren't fighting to <laughs> yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah. That came later on. But uh, yeah, so that wasn't an issue. And then once you're in, uh, if you do three out of five years in high school there, you become like an Irish student, quote unquote. So I was even eligible for like the free university education. So. <laughs> War, Imagine it, Bernie. That's like Bernie Sanders' dream, but that's just like normality in Ireland. But it's just life. Yeah. yeah, free healthcare, free university education. So was it was it really novel to people that you were an American growing up in Ireland? Absolutely, man. I mean, like, like do you get a lot in, of ass in St. Francis Prep? I'm just another like yeah. white kid from Queens. Whereas right. in Ireland, I'm the only white kid from Queens. Did you know? this lead to a lot of uh, luck with the ladies? Oh, well, I was in boarding school, surrounded by oh. men. So was it? You know? Did it lead to luck with the men? <laughs> well, you didn't. You didn't. Have, you were unlucky. I, I, <laughs> I, I won't get into it because it's not really like a hot ninety-seven conversation. But if you Google St. Peter's College where I went to school, you'll see that uh, there was a lot of unlucky guys. With, with but the, you weren't with, one of them. No, I was not. I, my, I guess my last name was Bishop. They didn't want to mess with the royalty. Did you? What, did you know that people were unlucky? No, only afterwards. Okay, so yeah. it wasn't something you were aware of at the time. No, no, not no. But I mean, I did. Okay okay with the ladies but yeah, at the end of the day I was a zitty teenager you so know even the even the, even having the American accent and being different didn't do nah, that I mean I did all right. I did all right I can't complain okay. but you know well, you it, stayed in Ireland your whole life so I, yeah. something worked out when I started doing comedy then I really started killing it okay got it <laughs> so um and 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 you only came back in the last couple of years yeah, so like uh, I went to China in 2013 and like did this whole project about learning Chinese to do stand up in Chinese in China, and then I liked it so much I stayed an extra year. So after the two years in China, I was like, man, I, I just don't feel like going back to Ireland. I'm gonna try the U.S. I'm gonna try to move back. So in uh, 2015, I started slowly sort of moving back here, and now I'm here full time. So if I don't make any money in America now, I'm not making any money. So tell us about the China project. That sounds interesting. Oh yeah, so that was. So like in Ireland, I've done okay. You know, I've done a lot of like these uh, these TV documentary series, which are usually like about something serious with like a funny angle. So the learning Chinese to do stand up in Chinese was really just like a, a six part series about China. But the hook was, can this guy learn Chinese for one year, learn Mandarin for one year, and then do stand up 
at the end of the the first year. And this was paid for by an actual, Irish television, an Irish, a big RT, Irish radio television, Aaron. And that's a big. Yeah, I mean, over here it would be like PBS, but Got it's it. Ireland's state broadcaster. Okay. But like PBS in Ireland is like normal. Is the BBC big in Ireland too or no? Yeah, everyone everyone gets everyone the BBC. Everyone gets BBC too. How many is, BBCs? Which is tough because the BBC budgets are like 10 times RT's budgets. So you have to compete against this behemoth. So then when you go on Irish TV with your like crappy budgets, everyone's like, oh, this is so cheap. This is right, right. This looks terrible. This but, is rubbish compared to... <laughs> this is rubbish compared to the BBC. So uh, anyway... Uh, long story short, I did it. I made that series. Wait, wait, wait I want to hear more. Let's stop about it. Like, so, okay. So, first of all, how's your Mandarin? Oh, my, pretty good. Like, I, I, I can't complain. I mean, we don't have anybody to... Uh, we don't to, have anyone here who speaks we Mandarin. We don't have anybody to test it. Um, okay. I'm not sure if you're in the Korean. So, maybe, maybe if they're listening, they'll know. Okay. You know? You, but I, I just put out like a little secret message to your Chinese listeners. Okay, so if, could you like get me, get me through like... Um, I have a show coming up this weekend at Caroline's. Um, I'm very excited about it. Caroline's And also, if you're interested, <laughs> I, <laughs> now I have to translate. I want you to just keep. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna put me under pressure. So, okay, that's, that's, so by the way, this, you sound like you, you sound good. To me. I mean, it sounds legitimate. I don't think you're faking this. <laughs> Yo, recently in the comedy show, so sometimes I have a lot of. Material in English about my time in China. So recently I, I said, is there any Chinese people here? This girl said she was Chinese. She was from a part of China that I'm very familiar with. So I got excited. I spoke in Chinese. And then the audience applauded, right? Because they were like, wow, this guy's speaking Chinese. So I was That's like, what so are you guys funny. applauding? I could literally just be going like, fong, fong, fong. You know, I could be saying no, nothing. No idea. And the woman who I was talking to said, That's my last name. <laughs> but it's like totally true. Fong means wind. And by so, the way, double funny is that no one's impressed when she speaks English. Oh, and, and that is one of the jokes that I have. Right. I mean, I'm not going to do it now, but I have but a joke. But a white man who speaks Chinese, it's, it's like, holy oh shit! Oh my God. Yeah, that's white privilege in action right there. Yeah, like yeah you I have must... a whole joke about that when I'm in Flushing Main Street and somebody's like, excuse me, where Subway? You know, I'm never like, wow, your English is so good. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's what you sound like, right? You probably still sound like a foreigner speaking Chinese. Oh, I sound Chinese. like a total white guy speaking Chinese, but we don't have that ear. Oh, exactly. So we hear, we but go, my, oh, this is my, the, my Chinese is the equivalent of like, oh, how, how well? Right, yeah. right, right, but, right. But the funny thing is, in China, so like here, you can't you can't do that humor because it's offensive to Chinese Americans who are just as American as all of us in the studio. Which is why they get offended. And then you're right. going, you know, you're going like, fong, fong, and it's like, what are you? I'm American. Why why are you doing that to me? You know. But uh, in China, they love it when you make fun of their crappy English. Like really? they kind of request it. Yeah, but it's very different then because even the Chinese comedians do a lot of jokes about. Like for example, in Chinese, the punchline is xiao dian, but it means laughing point. That's actually how you translate the word punchline. It's laughing point, right? So the Chinese are, the Chinese comedians are always doing jokes about when you translate it. So it's like, oh, I like your joke. The laughing point is very precise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which, which funny enough, to, uh, goes right into a stereotype, which is that very sort of mathematical. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, did you, what did you think of China, like, in general? Well, I love thing? China. It's like chaos. You know, if you ever go to Flushing Main Street, like, imagine the chaos of that and then multiply that by, like, a hundred. Uh, you know, because there's like 20 million people in Beijing where I was living. They're all just like, it's 20 million flushing Main Street people, you know, all crazy. And so it's, you're never bored, super exciting. The air is crap. The people are great. You know, people here think Chinese people are ignorant. But just society is so busy there that like you bump off people, you spit in front of people, nobody cares because they're just like there's always people. Whereas here, people think that's kind of it, rude. It's rougher, so it's rougher around the edges than New York. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's like no health and safety. There's no political correctness. <laughs> right. So like, would you be a little freaked out about like having your kids in Beijing? Like, if you had children and you're walking out, the with them only reason I would be freaked out about having kids in Beijing is because the air quality is bad. For any other reason, it wouldn't be a problem. What about like, like if you're fat in China? Which I would be, be like, if I was there. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm fat here. I'll be fat. In China. <laughs> if you're fat in China, they'll just be like, "Oh, you're so fat." <laughs> like they they don't care. Directly you know? right to your face. Oh, right to your face. How, oh, you're so fat. And did, if you get offended, they were like, well, "Well, don't be fat." <laughs> did you? Did, how did you do being a white guy there? Uh, is this back to how did I do with yes. the ladies? I, I always uh, think being a foreigner because it's rare. I guess I'm so used to foreigners not being. Oh, 
You literally look like honestly. Your name could be Whitey McWhite. <laughs> that is offensive to me. What had to admit, had to admit it. That was an accident. <laughs> that is Whitey Whiterson. Your name would be Whitey Whiterson. <laughs> but like, so, so, so you're the, crackering me up. But uh, <laughs> the the white thing in China, like 15, 20 years ago, that was like real exciting. Yeah, not so much anymore. Yeah, they've gotten used to it. And secondly, you know, Chinese people are killing it with the money nowadays. So like 20 years ago, it was like, here's my ticket out of China. Whereas now, it's kind of like, oh, this guy probably doesn't make as much money as my neighbor. Right. So it's not as exciting as it used to be. But I did okay. But then, like, it's really difficult because if, say, you met a girl and you fell in love, the parents would hate it. You know, I, I mean, I, I, was with a, I was with a girl for, like, a year and a half, and I tried to get her to move here. But In China? Yeah, I tried to get her to move to New York, but she, you know, she couldn't do it. The parents wouldn't let her go. Yeah, so I had a proper, and she didn't speak English. So I had she, a proper. Which, in, in all fairness, she was only fourteen years old. She, she, she was. It's not Cambodia, bro. <laughs> different, different. Country. Well, the parents still shut it down, even though she was a grown woman. They, no. They, well, they put her under major pressure. Yeah. They just didn't want her to leave China, and it's her only kid. You know, you got to remember, she's born after nineteen eighty, so it's the one child policy. So they only have one kid. They don't want to lose that kid to. That's mm, wild. To the to the Western devil. Yeah. That's so some real. Western devil coming in and stealing her back to that's, America. That's right. Wow. That's right. They've had ne negative experiences with. The so now invaders. you've gotten. So now you have a bit. I'm sorry. I'm going to reveal this. You you have a thing where you like to do jump around in Chinese. Well, actually, I can do jump around in three languages because I can do jump around in Gaelic as well. So and English, obviously, but that's that doesn't count. But uh, you know, it's the Irish American national anthem. Like we all have to learn it as children. <laughs> so even though even though they really had nothing to do with that, like, or is 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 Everlast Irish? I, you know, I, I heard something that's like he's a very very sort of tenuous link with uh, Ireland. He's, he's not from Boston. He's he just wore a Larry Bird jersey in the video because it was a time. And a, a, a little aside. In the video, there's like a quick snippet of three guys kind of kicking the crap out of each other. I don't know if you remember the video. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, one of them is my first cousin. No. Dennis Palazzola, yeah. Yeah, so he... Uh, he Wait, what's his, his name? His name is Dennis Palazzola. He, Palazzola? Because he, he, my mother's sister married an Italian. I'm about to say, okay, because I'm there's confused. A little bit of a mix there, yeah. Um, so uh, la a larger package, would but you, Irish charm. Would you ruin your bit if you kick a little bit of it here? No, why, why would I ruin it? Okay, good. There's no punchline. At the end of the day, it's really just me... Doing jump around in Chinese, and it's just know? and it's just entertaining because how often does one? Well, get to yeah, see I mean, you know, when you're in the vibe, like me and Cipher do it, or Cipher and I. What does what does Cipher do when you do this? He oh, just he hypes just, the crowd and yeah, jumps. Yeah, and with then you? we do like a little thing at the start. It's like Cipher, can you give me some? Uh, can you give me like a bit of Chinese music just to set the vibe? And then he always plays like, and then I say, oh, a little bit less racist would be great. And then you know we have a bit of banter, and then this comes on. So you want to do it in Chinese or in Gaelic? What do you want to hear first? This is this is not the bed though. It's not. It's, oh, it's the actual song? Yeah. We don't have the oh, instrumental? Oh, like, you don't have the bed? I don't have the bed. I was looking for it. Oh, oh damn. I mean, up. I don't need it. You know, I can... I can yeah, yeah, I, and by the way, I, we all know the beat. Everyone knows the beat. You can hum it. You can hum it in your head. You're going to give a sample and then you do the acapella? Or? It's, it's uh, you know... Yeah, I, give them a little... Yeah, give, everyone will know the beat. Who forgot. Yeah. So then I usually go like, Bonnie, yeah. in the show's at Tianxiang, which means like, put your hands up in the sky. And then, you know. People are already excited the second they yeah, hear this. Yeah, everyone. I, I get them to put their but it's a comedy club, so everyone's like really white with their hands. Of course. You and like Shaping and D, Hole Man Man Tikao, Tu Ping Mo Feng, Shou Chang, Hai Di Lao, Wu Jit the Jung Guang, Wu Shin Ga Kai Lung, Jie Shi Bi De La Shi Wa Shin Ga Zhou Jiang, Bi Ya Dao Wan, Wu Hai Mei Cheng Wan, Hao Xiang Tong Zhi, Wu Bu Pan Nan, Hao Hao Shui Xi, Tian Tian Shang Shang, Wu De Shou Chang, Ye Xi Ye Shun Zheng Shan, Wu De Jie Zhe Hen Shen Er, Wu Jie Zhe Hen Shen Er, Wu Fei Cheng Hua La Xiang, Lu Shang De Ro Chua Zhe Men Feng Guang De Di. They go Feng Kuang the Wu Dao. Da Jia is a Ichi Kuang Tao. Let's jump around. Kuang Tao. <laughs> and there's a beat there. Kuang Tao. Yeah, that's it. Kuang right? Tao. Yeah, and, a, and then Da Jia is a Ichi Kuang Tao. Come on. Tao. 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 It is a music. I, 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 I know. It's weird. You want me to do a little bit of translation yeah. for you? The uh, translation is yeah. kind of funny. So uh, at the beginning I say, so it's pack it up, or the last verse is, I'm the cream of the crop, I rise to the top. Right, I mean, right. there's no translation for this. Not, like, and most of it is just nonsensical language. So uh, the first line is, you and like shaping and di hole man man tiga. So uh, my, 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 my standard was low, but eventually it improved. Chu ping mo feng shou cheng hai di lao means like um, my standard is is an imitation of the hip hop Hai Di Lao. So Hai Di Lao is like the best hot pot restaurant in okay. Beijing. Okay. Now I know yeah, in English, I never, in, in English that is like a pretty weak 
rhyme. Right, right. But in China, they love food so much. When you go, Shou Chang, Shou Chang is hip hop, right? So you go like, Shou Chang, Hai Di Lao. They're like, whoa. Oh, it's a big pop. Okay, I got it, got it. Hai Di Lao. You know, so like, I, don't know, I don't know how to give the so equivalent. How, how, right. how well does it go Tony over? Romas. <laughs> if, you, if, you do it, if you do that in China, how well does it go over? Well, you know, in China, it goes over well. But it goes over better, actually, would you believe, in the West, because we're familiar with Jump Around. Right. The Chinese aren't familiar with Jump Around. So they just think it's kind of funny that I'm like banging out this rap. And like, even in English, when you hear a, a, a rap for the first time, sometimes it's so quick you don't know what people are saying. So like my Chinese is good, but it's not like amazing. So like when I'm banging out hip hop, r Chinese, they don't really know what I'm saying. Right. But there's a couple of moments, like at one stage I go, Shun Zhong Shen, which is actually Sun Yat Sen. He's the godfather of modern China. Okay. So like when I bust out that, then they, they hear that and then they kind of laugh, you know? And then the Kuang Tao, they laugh because that's like... Do, what, do you plan on going back to China? Yeah, I mean, I just haven't been back lately, but it's fun when I go there. I mean, I have like a whole other set when I'm in China because, you know, it's like... When do you have a whole like life there and friends? You have a whole different... I have a whole different scene there. Well, there's like, there was like, a, when I was there, there was like a brand new stand-up comedy scene sort of emerging. That's why I stayed an extra year because it was really interesting to be part of that. Not to get hyper-personal here, but like you seem I'm like... I'm not circumcised. I... Sorry, question okay, number two. Well, forget it. No, no, no. <laughs> so, um, but it, it seems like from the life you live... Even though you did say you had a serious girlfriend there, it does seem like settling into a family for you. Like you, you you're such a nomad. Yes, I'm a bit like, nomadic. Does it does that scare you? The idea of doing that? Are you ready to be like, no, I'll just settle in. I'll live in New York. Maybe once a year I'll go away. But like ultimately, if you have kids and a family, like you're not just going to check out in China for a few months. I mean, you're absolutely correct. It's not conducive to that life. If it were to happen, great. But like, I just go with the flow. You know, maybe this is what. Maybe I'm just a nomad. Well, how's your alcoholism? Oh, I haven't drank since 1995. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped drinking. I was just a bad drinker when I was a teenager, so I stopped it. And then you were just like, I'm done. Yeah. Well, you know, I just I was like a black. I was like a Dr. Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, one of you those know? things. Which probably, which when you're a blackout person like that, it's probably the best move. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I mean, I don't, I don't miss it at all. And I have like a good social life. You know, I'm, don't I'm smoke, working. You don't smoke pot. You don't do anything. Don't. I don't do anything, man. I have wow. no vices. Wow. You. Yeah. No wonder you and Cipher get along well. Oh, is he like that? Sife does nothing. Oh. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I've, I've never actually had that conversation with him, but yeah, yeah. I've never seen him like drink in or anything. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, but I go well with all the comedians, the partying ones. Like Michael Che likes to party, but we all hang. Right, right. Well, Sife, that's who Sife has to party with almost all the time. All the time. Exactly. And so Sife, we ju in his last interview with us, he talked about trying to last when they're on the road and Shay goes out after the show. And I just say to Sife, like, he, I, I, I never drank until I, I was 25. And now right? you're actually and now surrounded it's, by booze right and now. This is, <laughs> I, you know, I never drank until 25. And I, I still am not a hardcore heavy drinker, but I definitely changed enough, unfortunately, I believe, that we're like, I can't relate to Sife having to survive, or you having to survive a night out with people partying and being sober and staying out till 3 a.m. No, like, I just don't see how to do it. The only time I last is if there's like a lot of attractive women. See and that that's the only thing and, and and I'm and the thing is I'm not single. So being that I'm married, the only thing to do is drink. Yeah, like otherwise what do you do? I mean it's so hard to I just leave, man. You like just, I'm not it, it, Irish goodbye. Oh, yeah, which is a, that's like an Irish American thing to Irish goodbye slip off because in Ireland the Irish goodbye is, is eight hours it never long. ends. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know, it's just like uh, you you were leaving and then an hour and a half later you're still standing. That's there. like the Jewish goodbye. I see. That's so funny. See, it's all nonsense. Oh, oh, mo like uh, uh, seventy five percent of stereotypes are totally nonsense. Yeah, I, I guess so. Because yeah, why I is went Irish to see, goodbye? I went to see Black Panther in Harlem. You know, because everyone's like, oh, you got to see Black Panther in Harlem, and it was just like a normal showing. People weren't screaming no. out the entire time. No. Well, that's too bad because my The only funny thing that happened when I went to see Black Panther in Harlem was uh, right at the beginning of the movie, these two guys were behind me and they started shouting, Yo, it's blurry! <laughs> yo, it's blurry! Fix the screen, yo! And I looked back and they didn't have their uh, the 3D glasses on. <laughs> so I was like, Yo, man, you gotta go and get the glasses <laughs> at the thing. And he's like, Yo, I gotta pay for those? I was like, No, 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 they're free. They're just by the ticket cash. It's not, it's not blurry. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, his name is Des Bishop. He will be at Caroline's all weekend long, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Go hang out on St. Patrick's Day with him. Well, let's have you back again. You're Any, I like you. Hey, anytime, man. Anytime. You're a nice man, and I enjoyed, frankly, uh, I think we, Sean and I both really enjoyed your jump around yeah, rendition. Yeah, oh, that thank was you. That was I always Did thought you do that my. Can chorus one more time? What's I, the chorus? Kwang Tiao. <laughs> Kwang Tiao. <laughs> and then in, uh, in Gaelic, it's um, Lame Heart. Lame Heart. Okay. Irie so, asked the foulest Lame Heart. <laughs> all right, save it for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it next time. Des Bishop, Caroline's all weekend. Thank you, man. Thank you.